All right, it looks like Mick is on. That brings us to eight. We're at quorum. Uh, Chris is out this week. He'll be out next week as well. Uh, Brian has a conflict with the conference today. Um, but regardless, let's get jamming on the agenda. So quick reminder, antitrust policy notice, we'll review that uh, every call. Uh, moving into the agenda, uh, mostly updates for today. Uh, so let's dive right in. So first, uh, as always, the HackFest reminders. Uh, October 3rd and 4th in Montreal is the next HackFest. Following that, we'll be coming back to Asia Pacific, likely Hong Kong, Singapore, potentially Australia. We're kind of exploring what's gonna make the most sense in terms of space available, as well as what works for the community. Um, one thing we do wanna avoid is the Chinese New Year holiday, um, and as well as some of the major events kind of around that time. So looking at that, we had initially thought potentially the week of January 14th or March 4th, and we can certainly move to a doodle poll, but just wanted to check quickly with this, this group if either of those dates seemed really good or if there are any major concerns that, that people saw. And if there's no real feedback, we can certainly move to a doodle poll if it sounds like either is potentially doable. Sounds good. Of course, one can only talk for himself, right? But so as far as I'm concerned, I think that's okay. Okay. Yeah, sometimes we overlook a major event yes. uh, that could I conflict. So. I appreciate the opportunity to say, hey, it's the French national holiday or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. If, if it's in January, that will only be like three and a half, four weeks after we were in Switzerland. Uh, correct. The But we're looking more on the Hackfest cadence, and the previous Hackfest will be October. Uh, with yeah. Montreal. But yeah. All right. Dave. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a fair point. Um, on on my own calendar, I know that after, just after March would be a little easier for me, but uh, that's uh, generally not an international celebration. Gotcha. It, it looks like uh, there are a couple of there's real world crypto is in California from the ninth or the eighth to the twelfth or the ninth to eleventh or so. Um, so if that one moved up earlier, that could pose a challenge for flying to Asia and back for some. In, in, and that was the in January or which month were you saying? That's in January. Okay. T tell me the name of the event again. Uh, Real World Crypto. All right, cool. I'll, I'll note that and we'll check against that. Uh, all right. Uh, sounds good. We'll, we'll get a doodle pull out. We'll check against those couple things that folks flagged. Um, all right. Also, the farther south we go, the more summer-like it will be. <laughs> All right. Um. <coughs> Australia. <laughs> I, I, I heard the vote for Australia. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was thinking New Zealand, too, maybe. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, so you're skipping. It's like either January or March. So is there a reason February yeah. is out? So... Chinese New Year, um, folks do leave during that. Um, our APAC team had been checking around some dates. Um, and this is after talking with China and Asia Pacific communities seem to be the weeks that work best for them. Um, but we can certainly try to look at some other February stuff as well. But this is our the recommendation. Yeah, because Chinese New Year is not the whole month, right? Correct. <laughs> I mean, if we aim like beginning of February, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, it's kind of unfortunate. One seems very close to indeed the December one, but, uh, and then it's a bit far out. So yep. February would seem like a more natural, like, yeah, this is a good middle kind of uh, place, but I understand there are many constraints. So Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good point, Arno. So we'll we'll push back and see within February if there's something that, that could potentially work. All right. Um, cool. Moving on from there is the annual TSC election. Nominations closed at 5 p.m. yesterday. We had 29 folks uh, nominate themselves. Really great uh, set of candidates there. We will kick off the election directly following this call. Um, those that are eligible to nominate, so as the 600 or so folks, will receive a ballot. 
to cast your vote, I will send a communication to all of you uh, just as this call wraps up. That will run for one week. We'll get the new TSC announced in the Thursday call next week and from there move into the chair election. That's all there. Uh, and then onward, we've just got a set of updates. So we've got uh, quarterly project updates. I have still not seen anything come in from Composer, but checking quickly if any of the Composer folks are on the call. And that sounds like no, uh, we will continue to push there. Uh, Indy, I did see come in. Uh, so I think you said that was Michael, right, Nathan? Yeah. All right, sounds good. And Michael, if you want to share your screen, otherwise I can send the link out to everyone, whatever you prefer. Yes, uh, let me pull that up and share my screen real quick. All right, let me just, one sec. All right, can everybody hear me fine? Yep. Great, so just a quick update on this past quarter. We're seeing quite a bit of growth uh, within both the community and um, just back and behind the maintainers as well. That's been a significant increase, but we're looking pretty well. Um, based on our growth, we worked through 94% of the CII badge and eyeing that uh, graduation from incubation even more. Um, we've surpassed quite a bit of, of milestones with that. And uh, among that, those updates, we've also had quite a bit of um, gatherings. You know, we have brown bag events pretty consistently. And the Amsterdam Hackathon and the Indie Agent Workshop were two highlights of the summer for us. And um, all of these updates, the running roadmap, I think we want to highlight that pretty well. That is a, uh, a nice, pretty consistently updated um, document that continues to show where we're at. As far as issues go, uh, we're seeing just, you know, some of the typical issues of, of growth, the growing pains, if you might want to call them. Um, you know, documentation con continues to pose a difficulty at times where, you know, there may be inconsistencies or lack of, or on the other side, redundancy and over documentation. So we're working on trying to consolidate that and uh, find good resources for both um, developers and end users so we can, you know, meet the needs of this diverse set of contributors. The roadmap's gonna be a great help for that. Um, we've seen a lot of, a lot of coordination also through hype. So, so that's kind of the Hyperledger Indie um, version of the HIPs for Hyperledger. And it's just a project enhancement formal process. And we've seen quite a few of those come in these past three months. Um, and apart from that, we're just trying to make sure that there is some good consistency between some of the technology components, such as the agents and, and just ensuring that the growth that continues over these next three months doesn't stifle us in any way. Uh, and then open to any questions. Um, moving on, we have... Um, yeah. There is one point I'd like to call out here, and that is we've seen a lot of code growth outside of the Hyperledger Indie project with you know, folks like IBM and the British Columbia government creating some fairly significant code bases that have not yet moved into Indie. And we're working really at hard at trying to help those folks um, make PRs and contribute. Um, if you work with one of those groups, um, the invitation here is please encourage them to, to make those PRs. We really do want that code inside of the main Hyperledger Indie project and then to get you know, credit as Hyperledger contributors as well as um, you know, that code is, is doing some significant, significantly helpful things in terms of helping grow the community and the usage of Hyperledger Indie and making it a formal part of the project is something that's very welcome. Uh, and we're continuing to engage with them and try to you know, work with them on helping get those PRs in, but it's um, not necessarily a priority for all the folks that are kind of working on the periphery. Do you so, have a sense uh, of it? Oh, go ahead, Arno. Well, I just want to respond because I know IBM is somewhat guilty in that department. I'd be happy to work with them, try to help bridge the gap. You know, I, and I've had discussion with them on that front. I mean, you know, the other side of the coin is people don't feel like 
bold enough, I want to say, you know, they, it's not like they don't want Nestle to contribute. It's already in open source, but they're like, well, can I make that contribution? Would that be welcome, right? There's a little bit of hesitation, which I think is natural. And so, you know, and I don't mean to blame you guys for not making it welcoming enough, uh, but mm -hmm. I think there's a natural hesitation that we have to overcome. Well, and I absolutely agree, and this is part of why we want to make a big deal of it, especially with the TSC, that um, any advice that you can offer in terms of helping us train our maintainers or, you know, reaching out to those folks to help bring them in would be really helpful yeah. to us. Because we're kind of in that project growth stage where there's a lot of outside interest and a lot of action now occurring. Um, but like Arno said, people are fairly timid, and we want to reach out to those folks and help bring them into the community. And, and that was exactly my question as well is, do you see that as the primary barrier is really kind of just encouragement and helping educate folks that it's okay to come contribute and feel welcome in the community, just general and projects or are there other barriers you're seeing too? Um, yeah, I think the, the barriers is first, we had some pieces of infrastructure missing, meaning there wasn't a good place to put some of those contributions. I think we've, we've solved some of that um, and we need feedback on where we might be missing more. Um, the second piece is involvement at Hyperledger in particular often takes voice calls and not all these teams are, are used to that kind of approach and we're trying to make more use of the mailing list and more use of some of the other forms that they're more comfortable with. And as we've seen some of that growth, there's a lot of overlap with some of the other projects at Hyperledger that haven't been involved in Indy yet. For example, um, at the Amsterdam in the Amsterdam community, there, there's someone who built a blockchain explorer for Indy. And we all know how many blockchain explorers um, tend to pop up everywhere. So um, we're trying to figure out how to best invite those folks in without causing um, any community consternation, you know, for finding the right place for all those pieces to fit. Gotcha. That's helpful. Yeah. And Nathan, I had a conversation with Sean at the Amsterdam Hack Fest. I have some ideas um, about you know different ways for like the contributing guide to to be improved and that sort of thing so um i'm definitely willing to you know work with you guys and see what we can do to, to make it a smoother process for people who want to get involved but don't necessarily know how to but yeah, thanks tracy I, 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 I sorry arno i was gonna say okay. nathan i'll jump in too i can look at help you guys with your infrastructure stuff and put on my coach dave hat especially the 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 core infrastructure badge and stuff like that. Make sure we get everything in place. Yeah, because the other item here is I think we're ready to do graduation from incub incubation into active, but I'm not entirely certain. I think there's a couple of, the, we're, we started the process of doing the security audit and there's a couple of items on the CII badge where it depends on how pedantic we want to be. We've kind of taken a very pedantic approach to filling out that form and some coaching will help us wrap that up. All right, I'll follow back with you guys. Make sure you get all that in place. Um, yeah, and security audit, yeah. You know, Nathan, on that front, the best way to assess where you are is to actually pretend you're going to apply for the graduation, right? Take the form, try to fill it out, and see, you know, if you have any gaps where you need to fill them up. So I think we already have the form filled out. Um, we'll check with Tracy and Dave to see how far away we are, and maybe we'll be able to get that email out sooner than later. Cool. So otherwise, I wanted to add a little bit to the discussion. I think everything you guys have talked about will make it easier. But at the end of the day, I really feel there's a human dimension, this hesitation that I was referring to. You know, you're an outsider. At first, you don't, you, you don't have any pretense that you can be a contributor to the project because you're new. So you start your thing on the side and then your side thing becomes bigger and bigger. And then you have to get through this process where you say, no, wait, I actually know enough about this technology that I can actually contribute to something meaningful and valuable to the broader community that it would make sense to actually move it into the project. And I think, you know, some of this, I don't think the tools themselves will, I mean, everything we do there, of course, is welcome. The easier we make it, the better. But at the end of the day, we may still have to reach out to the actual people to talk to them and say, no, no, but don't hesitate. They will welcome your contribution. So again, I'll be happy to try and help out with that part. I know the people in IBM work working on this. I, I'm in touch with them, so. 
Great, thank you, Arnaud. Um, so just to clarify with that, you're saying that if we take more of a proactive approach to say, to reach out to these side projects, if we wanna label them that, um, that would help expedite the process of getting those um, updates and changes into the repository, is that correct? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Great, awesome. Uh, I'll see if we can follow up with you to, to continue this discussion. If you said you could help us out with that, we'd really appreciate sure. it. Thank you. And um, thank yeah. you too, as well to Dave, Nathan, Tracy, and everybody else. Um, continuing on with this, you know, the releases and the activity we've had has to do a lot with the, um, you know, we've, we've completed the CI, get, got, getting close to completing the CII badge, a lot of hypes going in, and there's been a lot of work with the Indie Agent. Um, which we've seen it's kind of it builds on top of the SDK and uh, extends a lot of use cases and has established kind of an environment where a lot of uh, communities are building on top of it now because they see the practicality of it. Um, and our current plans again we're hopefully we'll be able to move toward um, graduation from incubation see if we can figure out the last few uh, boxes there we want to continue refining our documentation. Um, hopefully this can help us, you know, aid those who want to contribute, um, to contribute in a much more efficient manner and feel less intimidated perhaps by the, the code base and by the community. Um, and then there are kind of projects specific within India, different goals to help kind of polish a couple more things off. Um, as I mentioned before, with maintainer and contributor diversity, we have a couple new maintainers for Indie Agent and they're from different communities. I think we have Stephen, Stephen Curran and Matthew Hailstone from BYU and NBC Gov. They're, they're really contributing quite a bit and they were self volunteered or in other words, that they really enjoyed working on the projects and decided to help contribute even more. So we've loved having them on board. And with contributor diversity, again, as Nathan said, you know, there's a lot of work going on out there and we just want to try and get it in, but We've seen a lot of communication over Rocket Chat and on the mailing list. I feel like it continues to grow pretty well. Any, any questions on that? All right, thank you. All right, thank you all. All right. And uh, just wanted to chime in. Thanks for the, the really thorough uh, update and especially for getting that in uh, on schedule. You're welcome. All right. And then for next week, we'll have a uh, Hyperledger Borough update. Um, okay. Then moving into the final topic for the day uh, on the quarterly work group updates, public sector work group. Rose, are you on? I know um, the update did come in. Mark, uh, are you on? I am on. Uh, Rose is uh, saying that she will be on as well. Okay. Uh, but uh, let me, uh, would you post the uh, report that I can report back? Yep, uh, I just posted it into Rocket and then let me just post it into the Zoom chat as well. One moment. All right. that did you receive that did, did you want to provide the update in Rose's absence or are you trying to get her on the uh, sorry I was I started to give an update and muted myself <laughs> all right <no> <laughs> so, yes going back uh, the group has launched in uh, June uh, 2018 so very recently it's the youngest working group uh, and TS and uh, uh, Hyperledger. Um, we've uh, I've been uh, chairing it for the first uh, few weeks, uh, but very quickly, Rose took over because she has been proving to be very active and very interesting. And thank you, TSC, for nominating her. Um, it is about. Uh, 
18 to 22 people every call. We meet uh, on every other Friday uh, when it's not the healthcare working group uh, meeting. Um, I think that uh, the biggest issues and problems are around uh, not having enough uh, public sector representatives. It's rather people who want to work with public sector. Um, so uh, Rose is planning to do more of direct outreach, uh, particularly uh, to, to kind of encourage the folks that su uh, subscribe to the mailing list and subscribe to, uh, to the group to make sure that they really uh, work. Um, the members are more pragma programmatic than uh, technical, which is the case for many of the industry-specific working groups. So one of the challenges will be if we want to uh, implement uh, something coming out of that group to find people who actually have the knowledge and ability. Uh, however, the group has been working very actively. Uh, I would say that the sorry. Uh, health of the group is really good. Um, the chat channel has low activity, but uh, uh, and so is the mailing list, but the discussions are really good. Uh, there was a survey that was created uh, to find the ideas for what we want to do. Um, the uh, survey and the uh, emails uh, answers are uh, in the report. Um, the biggest, uh, that kind of shows the the top the people that are on the in the group and it also shows the some of the issues which is the biggest access is to get uh, interest is to get access to libraries of use cases uh, so really people come there to learn uh, but there are not many people to teach um, we are now connected uh, with uh, an, or we have created a concept where every uh, call there is a project presentation uh, until up until now we had projects from smart dubai uh, governments of ontario and british columbia and canada uh, there is also a lineup for next calls we want to that way to kind of inspire people and then uh, get them to ask questions uh, group has submitted the panel proposal to the hyperledger global summit which i think is a great show of you know being able to come together in a very short period of time and actually producing some work. Uh, we are planning to create a use case repository on the Wiki uh, or Wiki. Uh, we will continue to work on project presentations and we'll hopefully we'll get the submission in and then we can uh, do the panel as well. Uh, there is a good uh, diversity in terms of the representation and uh, geographic spread, but there is not much uh, diversity in technical versus uh, general capabilities. Um, so we would love from TSC uh, to refer us more members if you have in your companies or if in your uh, ecosystem, uh, people who would be good contributors to the group, please send us the, uh, them our way. Um, and uh, we feel like this group is starting to shape up as a programmatic space. Uh, and uh, the discussion of uh, how to communicate concepts uh, to lay person decision makers is one of the big topics recently. Um, so that's it, and I'm open for questions. This is Vipin. Hi, how are you, Marta? Hi, Vipin. Uh, so uh, I know that uh, there are organizations, I mean, let, let me put it this way. There are schools like, like Columbia School of International Public Affairs, um, you know, is one of those institutions. So have you, you know, we, we've had uh, hyperledger presentations there. Like I have presented on digital identity and uh, privacy, but uh, most of the others are concerned with public policy. It's a school of international public affairs. So they talk about that stuff uh, a lot. So there are some contacts there where, you know, and I'm sure that similar uh, programs exist in other, uh, other universities. And I think, uh, this would be a great uh, source of uh, 
um, sort of reaching out to the practitioners um, who interact with, uh, you know, the uh, governmental agencies or governments in terms of um, blockchain, because they're also very interested in this blockchain business. This is a very good point. Actually, um, we are just working with Colombia to get them um, in as associate members. Um, so this will be a good opportunity, but you're right, we should try reaching out more to the um, academic uh, um, environment. Hi, Manta, this is Bahua. Um about the public sector group meeting, uh, how many persons are from the Asia Pacific area? Do you know that? Mm, not that many. Well, there are many subscribed to the mailing list, but there are not many participating in the meetings. I would imagine it could be the time problem. Uh, we are looking at um, shifting the time in, in another quarter. So to have six months in one time zone and six months in another time zone. Okay, uh, let me see uh, what we can do to help encourage more persons to attend the meeting. That would be wonderful. Great, any other questions for Marta? All right, uh, thank you, Marta, for, for doing the overview there. Uh, and then just a quick reminder for the quarterly work group updates, the next one will be not until September 6th, but uh, that will be the architecture work group at that time. So that brings us to the end of the agenda for the day. Um, happy to give everyone 30 minutes back to your busy schedules, uh, but just take a quick minute. Any other questions, comments, thoughts from the group? Yeah, the global summit, you don't really list that in, in upcoming events. Is that because it's not a technical thing? Um, yeah, so we had listed it before just around the call for papers for technical topics, but it's a good point. Let me just add that back to the reminders on an ongoing basis, um, and, and, just so folks remember. And when does registration for that close? Does anybody know? Uh, Daniela, do you happen to know off the top of your head? I, I suspect probably November-ish time frame, but okay. um, yeah, I'll look it up. Don't worry about it. All right, sounds good. Thank you. But, but related, good. Sorry, um, Bob here. Re related question there. Does anyone know what the timeline is uh, on which uh, talks for that are going to be finalized? Yeah, I believe that gets announced on September 11th. Um, or right about that week is when we're, we're going to announce the agenda. So I think speakers get notified shortly, shortly before. And I can add that into the minutes. I'll, I'll get a firm date for you. Thank you. All right. Um, doesn't sound like any other questions. So thank you, everyone, for the time. And uh, we'll chat with you all next week. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Have a nice day. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have you. a good day. Thank Bye. you.